Hey y'all, welcome to this week's What's For Dinner video. And um, this week's video is gonna be in collaboration with my friend Erica from the YouTube channel, Mama Bear Homeworks. She does cooking and cleaning. She lives in a mobile home and she's a mama. And she does day in the life videos and very similar content um, as I do. And so I think y'all are going to really enjoy her What's For Dinner video. So when you're done watching my video, make sure that you go and check her out. I will have her channel linked down in the description box below along with her Instagram uh, page. So I hope that y'all will go give her, uh, give her a thumbs up and subscribe and tell her I sent you. And this week's What's For Dinner, I'm going to be sharing three of the meals that we had this week. And you will notice they're aren't reactions on two of those and that's because my son had some friends over and I didn't know if they would want to be on the reactions and I was kind of nervous so I didn't didn't capture reactions but uh, the meals did turn out good so anyways without further ado let's get into the video Hey y'all, welcome to tonight's What's For Dinner. Look what I have, my new stove. Y'all, I'm so excited. It is a GE, right? Yeah, it's a GE and it has a convection oven and everything, I'm so excited. But tonight, let me set y'all up. We're gonna make homemade sloppy joes. <laughs> so, I have my pan here. Get everything set up for y'all and uh, we're gonna start out and this is my first time using this and this has I have to know which setting okay the large burner we're gonna set it on about I don't know medium high and I've got a pound of ground beef that I'm gonna go ahead and put in here and start getting this warmed up and I'm using my new skillet or one of my yeah it's one of the skillets that came from my new pots and pans from um sweat <laughs> y'all i don't know if i'm saying it right it's c-i-w-e-t-e -E. i don't know how to pronounce it but anyways it's one of those i showed those in my last look for dinner but i just wanted to let y'all know and i will have the link i'll try my best to remember to link these down below because they're very reasonably priced in my opinion for stainless steel and and so far, I am enjoying these. And they're not real heavy. I do have some stainless steel pans um, that I used to use all the time. And my biggest complaint with those was they were just heavy. And there's nothing wrong with a heavy pan. It's actually good for some things. But sometimes I just, I just wanted something a little easier to deal with. So, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little salt and pepper. Just because I like to season the meat up a little bit even though we will be adding some seasoning to this in just a little bit as it cooks. But for now, I want to put a little bit in there. And so we're going to start letting this heat up. And it is. It's like a new stove. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to start browning this meat and then I will come back once it's done and we'll do the next step. Okay, y'all, now that our meat is done, I'm going to go ahead and drain the meat and then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna set the meat to the side and then I will come back with this pan and we will show you what we'll do next. Now we're gonna put two tablespoons of butter into that same pan and I have it still on about medium high. And we're gonna melt that and then we're gonna add, we're gonna melt this and then I'm gonna add in, I have about a half a cup of diced onions. We're gonna let these cook for about three minutes or so until they start to look translucent. And then we're gonna add our meat back in. And then we have some other ingredients that we will put in with it. Oh, and they smell so good, y'all. Just gonna let those cook. Um, we are actually going to start adding in the other, other ingredients and then we'll add the meat in last. Now, I was out of tomato sauce. So, what I have is, oh, I'm going to remove this because it's starting to get a little bit too dark. In here, I have a cup of water and three-fourths a cup of tomato paste because I read that you could mix these up and get the same consistency as tomato sauce. But I only need a cup of this. 
So once I get this all mixed up, I will get a cup out and then we'll add it to that and start making our sauce for the Sloppy Joes. Like I said, I got these a little bit darker than I wanted, but it'll be okay. Ooh, it's starting to sizzle. We're gonna add in my cup of tomato sauce, which I just made myself. And we're also gonna add in, we're also gonna need a half a cup of ketchup. Add that in. Then we're gonna add in a tablespoon of brown sugar, which I will have um, this recipe linked down below. And I always try my best uh, to put, at the beginning of the recipe, I'll put kind of a shopping list of all of the ingredients that you can screenshot. So there is a tablespoon of brown sugar, a tablespoon of mustard. Okay, and we also need two tablespoons of the W, the Worcestershire, whatever, the Worcestershire, Worcestershire, y'all. I always butcher that word, okay. Let's try and get y'all angled right. I need two of these. A tablespoon of white vinegar. And then we're gonna add in some seasoning. We will need a half a teaspoon of salt. A quarter teaspoon of pepper, just black pepper. A half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then also a half a teaspoon of onion powder. And then that is it. Then we're gonna mix all this up. And I'm just gonna turn this, cause it's still warm from before. I'm just gonna turn it down on low. And uh, we're gonna let this simmer. And as it simmers, it will start to thicken up. They said about five to seven minutes, so we'll just kind of watch it. Like I said, I'm kind of upset about these onions, but maybe it won't have a burnt taste. I hope not. Because I can see that black from them coming up. But maybe, oh, we'll just cross our fingers. Okay, y'all, it has been simmering for quite a while and I'm gonna go ahead and add the meat back into it. Stir this up real good and then kind of let it continue to heat up with the meat in. Okay, I still have this on low. I'm gonna let that kind of heat up some more and then I'm going to, um, we'll put it on some buns with some, with some cheese and then we will um, let you know how it tastes. Okay, y'all, here is mine. We put cheese on them, and I've got some Cool Ranch Doritos. So does Courtney. We're waiting on Bryce, so we're gonna try it out and let you know what we think. Okay, Bryce. He went back for a second one, so was it okay? Do you like it? I guess so if he went back for more. No, I, I died. Whatever. Courtney, how is it? I didn't finish mine. Anyways, this was easy. I think it was pretty good. So y'all might want to try it. How come your plate's so clean? Because I overflowed yours. His plate had it everywhere. <laughs> I'm just using a fork because He's, I it up. So, well, because I didn't put as much on mine as yours, so. This boy's birthday was yesterday. He turned 16. So we have some birthday cake we're about to eat. I'm 21 whatever he wishes don't don't make time for that fast 16 was hard enough for me 18. i'm, I'm not even ready for that nope slow down i'm 94. Right. she's about to be 13 next month but my baby my first born I'm 94. is 16. happy birthday Hi. i'm 94. <laughs> Hey y'all, tonight we're gonna be making beef tips and gravy. So I'm starting out with my Dutch oven and I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And we're gonna warm this up to over medium high heat. And the recipe I have called for two pounds of cubed chuck or stew meat and I have close to three pounds of stew meat. And what I'm doing is I am 
separating a little bit at a time so I can cook it in batches because we're going to brown this meat in the Dutch oven. So I am separating it out on this plate and I'm seasoning it with salt and pepper. So I'm going to start out with the first batch. Okay, once that Dutch oven is hot, we're going to start adding in our stew meat and we're going to brown it in batches. So here I am getting the first batch done. And once that is browned good on one side, then I'm going to flip it over and brown the other side. I will remove it and then I will move on to the second batch. I think I ended up having like three batches. Once I had all those done, I come back to my Dutch oven and I will add in some more olive oil, another tablespoon, and then we're gonna add in one onion that I diced up and we're gonna let that cook, I don't know, almost 10 minutes until those onions are soft. Okay, now that the onions are all cooked up and soft, we're gonna start adding our meat back in. And so, like I said, I had probably three pounds of meat because I thought I was gonna need a lot more than what I had. And um, next we're gonna add in a 10 and a half can of, 10 and a half ounce can of beef broth and a 10 and a half ounce can of French onion soup, which I forgot to show y'all. And next we're gonna add in one tablespoon of Worcestershire, am I saying it right y'all, sauce? And I was showing y'all the bay leaf, but then I realized because I had a little bit more meat, I needed to add some more beef broth. So I opened up another can and I probably used about a half of that can because I wanted to make sure I had enough liquid. And then I add in one bay leaf and um, I am going to bring this up to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to turn it down and let it simmer for about an one and a half to two hours covered. All right, it has been cooking for about two hours and the meat is tender. So I have some cornstarch and I have a third a cup of water. I added in three tablespoons of cornstarch and I'm gonna add it in a little at a time into our beef tips and gravy, or actually we're gonna make the gravy by doing this, but we added that in a little at a time and let it thicken up. And y'all, this turned out really good. We made mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese, but I did not get reactions because my son had friends over and I wasn't sure if they would want to be on the video, so I did not ask them on camera, but they all liked it and went back for seconds. Hey y'all, welcome to tonight's What's For Dinner. We're gonna be making chicken spaghetti. I'm starting out with some hot water. I've got some salt I'm adding to it. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. And then we're gonna add about 16 ounces of spaghetti noodles to it. Now I have, I have my other pan and I'm gonna start adding in two cans of cream of chicken soup. And I have this turned on low. And then we're also gonna add in a can of Rotel undrained. And then it called for a 10 ounce can of evaporated milk, which I didn't have. So I've got eight ounce, a little over eight ounces, probably almost nine of whipping, heavy whipping cream. Um, there's probably about maybe almost half a cup of heavy whipping cream and then I'll put milk in the rest. And then six ounces of cream cheese and I softened it somewhat in the microwave so I'm hoping it's soft enough. But uh, what we're gonna do now is just on low heat, I'm going to uh, mix this up until it's good and melted and you don't wanna heat it too fast. You don't wanna scorch it so I'm just going to while we're cooking the noodles over here. I need to stir these. Anyways, while those are cooking, I'm gonna be melting this. And then I also have my oven preheated to 350. Okay, y'all, I got my noodles back here already drained. Um, they're done. But what I'm doing now is just trying to get this all melted. I wish I would have softened my cream cheese a little bit better 
because I see the clumps of it and so I keep trying to like rub it against the side to melt those pieces. That's the only thing I'm having trouble with, but I don't, maybe I'll turn it up a little bit more. Um, let me down, let me know down in the comments below, what is the easiest way for y'all to soften cream cheese? I cut it into little chunks and I put it in the microwave, but I didn't, whoa, I didn't do it very long because I was worried about, you know, overdoing it. So, um, yeah, let me know. And I may end up adding some more cream because it seems a little thick. I just wanted to let y'all know that's what I'm doing. Just trying to get these chunks melted. Actually, actually, I'm going to add a little milk. Because I want it a little thinner. Not too thick. So, that's what we'll do. I'll continue this. Also, I put a little pepper. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of um, onion and garlic powder. Just for a little something, you know, extra. Sorry y'all, I thought I was recording. <laughs> I added one tablespoon of the ranch dressing mix to this. And then we're gonna add three cups of cooked chicken. And what I used was this Tyson Grilled and Ready pulled chicken breast that I warmed up in the microwave. And so I have it here. I'm gonna go ahead and just pour that in. this all up good in here and then we're gonna then I'm gonna go ahead and pour it because I don't have enough room to put my spaghetti noodles in here so we're gonna then we're gonna pour this into the spaghetti noodles and then transfer it to a 9 by 13 inch pan in just a second so I'm gonna turn this off and quickly throw these over here I'm trying to get all this in here. Stir this up really good. I'm actually going to use this little spoon here so I can. So I'm going to bring y'all over here. I have a 9 by 13 inch pan. I'm going to go ahead and spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. And then we're going to pour this into the pan. Next, I'm going to, we're gonna to top this with some, some shredded cheese. It says three cups, but I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball it until I get it nice and covered up. I have a big old bag over here. Now we're going to put this into the oven for about, uh, I think it said, for about 20 to 30 minutes until it's heated through and it's hot and bubbly. So I'm going to do that and then we'll be back. Okay y'all, got it out. It was in there almost 30 minutes and it is good and done. So I'll let you know what we think. Mm -hmm. 